Hello and welcome back and of course today we want to talk about the QNAP ransomware hack Q Locker. This is Let's be honest, this is a video I should have put out a couple of days ago. In fact, some of you in the comments have already raised that it's taken me a bit longer than one would have liked for me to put a video out about this, given how much I rabbit on about QNAP. However, as a number of you may have seen on Friday, I put a video out about the hardware shortages, and I'll be honest, that took up two, three days of my time just to get all the bare bones for that video put together. And I was so deep in that, I wanted to get that video done because it was just time sensitive. Maybe not as time sensitive as this, but I was part of the way through that. But here we are talking about QLocker. This video, I am going to go through a few things in. A lot of the assets in this video are going to come from multiple sites. And I will source them throughout the course of the video because they've done so much more work than this than me. And it's only fair that they get as much credit as possible. I've not experienced this personally, but I know a lot 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 of people are pissed about this understandably and genuinely justifiably so so i will reference lots of other sites and link to as many as possible in the description but q locker what is it what can you do right now if you have it or to avoid it and lastly qnap guys come the hell on we're going to talk a lot about qnap at the third part of that video but the first one for those that aren't already aware q locker is uh, it's a, a ransomware and it is utilizing the online services, uh, I believe my, my QNAP cloud, and basically getting access to the NAS via the remote internet portal. Um, it basically gets into your system as a malware, it zips up everything to an archive at Z7s, and then leaves a little readme text that goes, follow this link, we've um, completely encrypted your QNAP, it's gonna cost you, I think it's a decimal place, Bitcoin is about 500 nicker. Uh, to get the unit unlocked. They give you a password and it unlocks it. It uses command line injection and there was a couple of um, 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 vulnerabilities on the system were identified and one in particular, I think uh, taking advantage of the multimedia stuff that we'll talk about in section two of the video. Um, but again, for a brief period, for those that aren't aware, there's a guy called uh, Jack Cable uh, on Twitter. Lots of people talked about it there and I'll be honest, absolute hero of a guy. He managed to not only after someone paid and submitted a, a key to let him see and a bunch of others, uh, they were reporting online that they were able to actually effectively come up with a key gen for people to be able to unlock their systems. Um, quite ironic that, that the hackers in a way got their own stuff hacked. Unfortunately, they managed to notice this because obviously it's public and they sewn up the hack within their key system. Unfortunately, meaning that that is no longer an option. So what is the result of this? It means that the bulk of the data on your NAS system are completely encrypted and, and leaving you at the moment with the option, and do you pay? What do you do? Do you contact QNAP? Is there a solution out there? I think solutions are being worked on, whether they are going to be in any way complete by the end of this video. I hope, and I know this is going to be incredibly trite for a number of you. I hope you had your backup strategy in place. I know a number of you, when you buy a NAS, you assume that NAS is my backup. And again, we can go through the nature of backup and redundancies and snapshots, which we will talk about in other videos and later more in this video. But for now, that is what this hack is. Is it the first hack we've talked about? No, everything from QSnatch to Echorax, and there was all the stuff we saw before when people were using it for crypto mining. But it, come on, let's be realistic. QNAP's name seems to come up a lot more than everyone else on this subject. I'm not gonna say that they are the only brand that get hacked, they're not, but we do seem to see their name crop a little bit more, and I'm hoping in this video we can talk a little bit more, not only about their response and why a number of us are feeling it was not good enough, but on top of that, the nature of NAS hacking, and a lot of the time that people just aren't aware of the dangers, and therefore, um, a lot of the brands are kind of pointing at you and saying, you've got to have a backup because these things happen, and there's arguments for and against, and we'll cover them all. But is that enough? But for now, let's go on to what we can talk about, which is what to do if this is happening to you or to avoid it happening to you. So if you own a QNAP NAS right now and you haven't had this happen to you, these are the things you need to do. Unsurprisingly, update QTS. You've got to make sure your latest version of your firmware. And again, I'm saying QNAP here, this applies to all NAS brands. You've got to make sure you've got the latest firmware on there. And again, we're going to talk about the nature of firmware later on as well. So stick a pin in that one. But more precisely to QNAP on this occasion, because let's face it, they're the ones that have dropped the ball here. Um, you need to make sure um, um, Hybrid Backup Sync is updated to the latest version. You have to make sure Multimedia Console, because it was DLNA uh, Media Server and Media Streaming that really was the culprit here. So make sure Media Streaming is also updated and make sure you run Malware Remover and make sure that is on the latest version. Again, 
this will in theory close that loophole for now but again this isn't something that's new this is something that's persisted for a while as a vulnerability and a lot lots of users just do not regularly update their firmware and firmware is the name of the game in this and again this is not letting QNAP off of the hook there we are going to get onto them in a bit but firmware is the key thing here because again we've talked about on the channel before this idea that it isn't just about NAS it's about anything to do with data that the people that protect the data are only ever one step ahead of the hackers and then it's just a constant game of cat and mouse forever I'm not just talking Google Drive I'm not just talking NAS drives and QNAP I am talking anywhere where there's data from it. when every time you hear that an internet service provider or a bonus point scheme card gets their user information out there this just happens from time to time it doesn't make it good it doesn't make it right it certainly does not make it okay but it has to be said that this kind of hacking stuff is kind of consistent in this data kind of society that we live in today now what if you've been hacked if you've been hacked or you're in the process of being hacked let's go with that if you're in the process of being hacked QNAP say and again all of the statements in today's video with regards to dealing with this predominantly come from QNAP's own resources, which could have come a little bit bloody quicker. Um, they um, are mainly based on the idea of making sure you run that malware scanner, uh, but also not to reboot your device. And that's very, very key uh, to not reboot that device. If you think or you're noticing that there's a lot of processes happening on those drives, they do urge you to contact them. But again, if the process has started, they seem to be very, very vague about whether you should cease the operation, which you can do, which we will get onto in a bit, and also powering down your device. Now, again, there are much, much better guides than this. I'm not just going to bark at you in a video. Go to the description. There are links to guides on other websites who have done a lot more work and a lot more proactive stuff on this right now than me that have had hands-on with this um, happening to QNAP NASIS. And I recommend if that you're in the process of this happening, that you stop watching this video, come back to it later if you wanna hear me roast. But for now, go to the description and go through those guides. Now, if you're mid encryption, if you're mid encryption, firstly, disable my QNAP cloud. Very, very important because that is kind of the portal that this is happening on. Secondly, change your default Ad, uh, administrative port access there generally 8080 by default make sure you change that because that is where it's going to be coming through uh, that is the opening point there you can also and again link to the description you can kill the process of the encryption and the archiving even of your overall system and again i do recommend you check that out in the description the link to that but if you've come to your nas and this has happened do not power it down contact QNAP directly which leads us on to QNAP themselves because they don't actually have an active solution right now for those that are affected so let's move on now to QNAP's response to this so why was QNAP's response to this bad well first and foremost communication that is just kind of the big big problem here because it looks like this was known about for a while and although they were working on patches for this I don't think they told it people anywhere near as much as they should or anywhere near as loud as they should have I talk about QNAP on the channel a lot I do like them as a brand but it has to be said that the real over reliance on due diligence and the way they communicated with people on this was for me not on par it was not good notwithstanding the fact that it was slow the fact that they didn't really hear enough from you know the brand did not inform people quick enough despite having relative prior knowledge and i say relative we'll get to that in a second was for me the biggest one they're running updates and they have managed to close this after the fact which let's face it for a number of you watching this video is nowhere near enough but it's that idea about communication that is the problem now the reason i talk about communication more than anything is because when it comes to buying a solution, particularly one that has a doorway to the internet, there has to be an understanding that the end user can span from pro to absolute novice. And I think a lot of the security concerns, a lot of the approaches that have been made on these devices, and this isn't just QNAP, although in this case, obviously, whew, they're on the spotlight. It's that there is an over-reliance on the more tech-savvy understanding of these things. Now, I've watched a few videos before this video about people that have suffered this and how it has affected them. And on a number of cases, 
The biggest anger behind this happening is not having a backup in place and relying on the NAS as a backup. And again, we can talk to the end of the day about the nature of backups and the nature of the 3-2-1 strategy and if there's more than one copy of a file in one location and blah, blah, blah. But in order to avoid this on QNAP's part, they say that they run patches regularly and firmware updates and recommend that people in install them. They say that they link um, your personal email and contact information to keep you notified of things and they have a whole hack report page where vulnerabilities are reported on and when their resolutions are reached are published. Now again, all the brands do the same thing. However, that is not very direct for a number of people out there. That is by no means user friendly. That's hardly a Facebook push. That is the idea that the onus is still on you in most of those regards to stay on top of it. It is worth highlighting that most of the things I just described, particularly firmware updates and app updates can be automated, but we will talk in a little bit about mandatory updates and why despite most brands putting it out there that they can be set to mandatory so they can't be avoided, the majority of people still don't click them. But again, going to, to how QNAP dropped the ball here, it was about communication more than anything. And most of the people, had they known this was a factor or known that this vulnerability exists, and QNAP had just said, this vulnerability exists, you need to firmware update now, it would have been a very different story, I believe. Not everyone still would have updated, I don't think, but it was the fact that it wasn't a loud enough shout from the ramparts for people to have that information. And for me, that is where this whole thing has kind of fallen apart a little bit. But now let's talk about right now what they could have done and what they have and haven't done. So the first thing that a lot of people talk about online right now about this, about them not doing, is this idea of mandatory app updates right there they're saying that your QNAP now once you set it up it, whether it's going to be a low level DLNA or file server or whether you, you're going to use it for something a bit more proactive these firmware updates that close hacks and vulnerabilities should be mandatory and why aren't they well unfortunately and again this comes away slightly away from NAS look at your mobile phone look at your smart TV look at your laptop look at all of your hardware devices how often do they have a pop-up that says there's a new update available do you want it all of those devices gave you an option at one point or another that said do you want those updates to be automated do you want them to just happen in the background and most users simply do not click that now, I'm a, not a psychologist. I don't know why I can tell you that a few of my devices, I don't click update. I do it on my NAS, but I definitely don't on my Google phone. Can't tell you why. I think maybe because I feel like a new firmware update, I want to sit on the fence and see how many other users install it and their systems don't get knackered. And then I jump on with the next firmware update. Hacks happen all the time. They happen to PlayStation Network. They happen to Xbox. They happen to NAS brands. Third-party clouds, they happen again to your ISP service. These things happen. But still, in spite of all of that, the majority of us will not set up mandatory updates. So although I personally think that all NAS brands should enforce mandatory firmware updates, I also know that if they did that, more people would be unhappy than happy. So although QNAP have f***ed up here... They, I don't, I can't really criticise them for the mandatory update side of thing because I think there's enough people that would push back on mandatory updates that it would, if anything, make matters worse for a lot of other people. Next, if you have been affected by this, should you unplug your QNAP NAS from the internet? Right now, if you are unsure, nice and simple, disconnect. I, d I don't think a NAS should be disconnected from the internet personally, and I do think the benefits of a network attached storage device should be, you know, that you can access it locally and via the internet anywhere in the world. But if you don't feel that your data is secure, if you don't feel that, you know, it's completely untouchable, then you should disconnect it from the internet until you feel otherwise, or till the brand, particularly QNAP in this case, or anyone, reassure you of that fact. Thirdly, would a backup for people that have had this happen to them, would a backup of help to them? Now, by backup, I, of course, mean something off-site. I am not going to include 
a raid. Raid is not a backup, and raid would have done sweet F all in this scenario. I am talking USB backups, I am talking cloud backups, and I am talking time-managed semi-backups, stuff like snapshots, which are kind of like a glorified version of versioning. Now, those that are off-system and not um, accessible in the conventional sense, those backups will be fine. But I've seen in a number of cases that this hack, this ransomware, a directly connected device was not completely untouchable. So in most instances, a backup time managed would have been okay. Using something like R-Sync, where there is another system with another brain, QNAP or otherwise, I think would have been okay. But not all firms of backup would have made you untouchable. So that question, I'm not going to give you a yes, no. A backup of your data on another system would have helped. And a number of you are saying that a QNAP NAS system right now, you shouldn't be have to be expected to buy a second NAS system. I'm not sure I agree with that because I think if your data is that precious, you should have two copies. And I think it is a realistic expectation to have two copies of your data. Think of a USB key in your pocket. Just because a device costs more, it, you expect it to last longer, but nothing is perfect. I do think at least two backups should be the bare minimum here. Um, next, should you pay for the ransom? I personally would not pay. I think one, because if you are being ransomed for it, yes, if your data is precious, the photos of your children, um, business critical data, you're going to have to make a decision on your own value structure. But right now, if you can, do not pay because all you are doing is facilitating this kind of nonsense you are facilitating this happening to another person and i know that is absolutely no comfort whatsoever if your data is sitting there in an encrypted locker and you are uncertain if you're going to get it unlocked but still nevertheless i would not pay into this sort of thing which again is very pious of me and i apologize and the last one of course should you avoid qnap nas this is a big one, let's be honest, because this is such a big thing that's happened in the way it's being marketed. If you didn't want to go for QNAP, if you do not have 100% confidence right now, until they win you back, you probably shouldn't get a QNAP NAS. I would not suggest buying any device right now that doesn't have your full confidence. But what I will ask you is to be relative. When you look at a device, look at the history of the network attached storage industry, because you are still only one step away from a hacker, be it on a NAS, be it on the cloud, on anything. And so remember, keep your backups. Make sure you've got multiple backups. In short, what I'm saying is QNAP are going to have to do a hell of a lot to win back people's trust right now because this is kind of the stuff that PR nightmares are made of. At the same time, people do need to be realistic about backups. People can't just assume that any NAS, not QNAP, not anyone, is a backup if it's on its own. You've got to have more than one copy of your files. And yes, that is expensive. Yes, it seems like a tall order, but it all comes down to not how much your data is worth, but how much it costs for you to lose it. And right now we are learning a messed up lesson about the actual cost, apparently decimal place of a Bitcoin, how much it costs to for you to lose your data. QNAP, I'm sure you're watching this video, and if you are, you need to do more about telling people about the problems. You can't rely on people coming to your sites, your services, your notifications to know more. You're going to have to push mandatory updates, and unfortunately, you're going to get a lot of stick back from that anyway, and you need to talk to people more because that is the biggest issue here. People are feeling like they weren't told. And although people are getting angry that their data is locked up and a little bit of that is, of course, mixed with backup strategies and how well they took it, it has to be said that the communication in this issue that has arisen has been sub. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I cannot stress this enough. As much as I enjoy making these videos, the links in the description are where the real heroes are at. Go down there, look at the guides, look at those news reportings, go through. There's a lot of valuable information there and I would say a lot more balance than I can give you on a channel predominantly associated with NAS. Thank you so much for watching. Go down there. I'm not even going to say all the bump at the end. Go down there now. I'll see you later.